Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another fabulous week of the PM Show. I am one of your hosts, Andy Parsons. I also have with me the prodigal son, John Moreland, who's back with us finally. John, welcome. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm glad to be on my own show. <laughs> we do thank uh, both Ken the Liberty Phoenix and Danica the Great for their service in the last two weeks, filling in. For yeah, while you, I was being a bum, they were helping you. <laughs> but there's, of course, there's no replacement for John. No replacement at all. Nobody can fill John's shoes. Oh, well, I don't know. Was it Danica? Was she on last week? She was on both weeks. Yeah. Oh, she okay. She she seemed like she was doing a good job last week. Uh, Danica is top notch. You guys will have to meet sometime. She's awesome. Love me some. What now? She uh, the, does she hail from uh, the great state of Georgia as well? She does not. You know, she's one of the cool ones. She actually just made a cross country trek from Idaho out to New Hampshire. She is a free state project person. Ah, uh, you know, I, I've been wanting to. Uh, I've wanted to for a long time visit New Hampshire. Never have. Would like to go visit those folks so sometime. Maybe Pork Fest. Yeah, I didn't get to go this year. We've talked about that several over the past several weeks um, with my friends. My friends and I have, and um, my goal is to get up there next year. So I'll be there next year. Well, who knows? I might make it next year as well. I hope you do. It will be fun, and we could do a live broadcast from Pork Fest. Uh, yeah, you know, that's the great thing about the internet now. You can be just about anywhere. Absolutely. I'm, and I'm sitting on my toilet right now. I hope not. I really hope not. <laughs> but who knows? So, hey, you can do it from anywhere, right? Yeah, but that was TMI. <laughs> that was real TMI. That's our that's our toilet humor for the night. That was all. That that's all you get. Yeah, thank you. That's all we want. <laughs> all right. So since since I've been a lazy bum this week and you you were the good one and you picked out all sorts of good stuff for us to talk about, what do you want to start with? You know, I want to start out actually with an article that I found um concerning cops and I think the funny thing if I can find it, I have a lot of articles pulled up here. Um, there's a lot of articles, and let me try to find the one. Yeah, keep talking. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. All right. So, you know, as I've gotten involved in this movement, the voluntary slash anarchist movement, the more I'm finding out that these people really don't like cops. Nobody likes cops. I mean, we've got cop block. We have people who say the cops are not helping, they should they have too much power, et cetera, et cetera. How do you feel about cops? Uh well you know, I mean I have mixed feelings about law enforcement. Actually I've I've hmm let me try to put this nicely. I'm not a fan of law enforcement because I'll just say that Thomas Jefferson said the law is often the tyrant's will. So it's whatever they want. So I'm really against law enforcement. What I'd like to see is peace officers. Keep the peace. Stop you from harming me, me from harming you. And that's really all that they, they should do. But right now, if you go on the internet, I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot. And you can find uh, just abuse after abuse after abuse. I mean, go on YouTube. I mean, geez, you could spend a day watching cops just beat the crap out of people for almost absolutely no reason. It's true. It's absolutely true. And a lot of people have problems with law enforcement because even if they say there are good cops, there are not really good cops because the good cops are so concerned with keeping their jobs, they don't call out somebody for doing something wrong who's on the force with them. Oh, yeah. You know, I think there's a lot of corruption now. And we talked about this three weeks ago now, but remember the poll we were looking at and the, the trust in – what was the trust in law enforcement? I mean it was dismal. It was, it was like 50 percent. Yeah, it was really low. So it was like half the country doesn't trust the police. I mean that's not good. I mean that's not a good thing. But it also shows you 
more and more people are becoming aware that these guys aren't some white knights of nobility, you know, breaking down doors and busting women for, you know, engaging in a voluntary exchange. You know, the, I, I'm always confused because, you know, once you're out of high school and uh, you're on Facebook, you don't keep up with your high school friends, but yet you do because you see them okay. on Facebook. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a, a you, several. You, you have those Facebook I friends don't... that are high school friends, right? Well, I no, I know what you're talking about because I I have several of my classmates on my Facebook page. We might not talk every day. We might not talk very often. We might not talk at all, but we still want to keep up with each other. Oh yeah, and so I mean, I've got so many Facebook friends that yeah, you know, I haven't spoken to them since freaking high school. But anyways, I'll, I always get an, annoyed. I'll see some of these. Oh, think a cop today or this. And I'm like, you know what? That guy goes to work every day, and he's there to get paid. And I have nothing against that now. But let's not worship these guys, okay? The garbage man, do you have a think a garbage man day? No, because he gets paid to pick up your garbage, okay? I just don't <laughs> get all these days where we pick out certain – I mean, like like certain um, careers we should worship people who go into certain uh, you know, occupations. Like teachers, everybody's like, oh, teachers, I know I'm about to hit a nerve here. But I'm like, okay, they, it's a job. Now, they may love their job, and there's nothing wrong. That's great, you know, find a job you like and do it. But that's a job, no more important or no less important than the plumber or the garbage man or the cop or who, whatever else, you know. What is it hurting, though, if the teachers do have an appreciation day and it is for the students to the teachers? I mean, what is that hurting? It's not hurting anything, and I'll tell you. Yeah, with the you garbage, know, we need to change the name of that. Hey, with the garbage your that we put up with, day. <laughs> no, when, with, the, with the garbage that we put up with on a daily basis, an appreciation day is really nice. It, it's hey, do me. kids bring you apples? Do they still do that? Is there the one nerdy kid oh. that brings you an apple? Nobody brings apples. No. No, it's only in the movies? You don't even get we, apples. Look, we had teacher appreciation I demand days. apples. I don't want apples. I want chocolate. My kids brought me chocolate, so I'm happy. <laughs> So I'm All right, good, so they bring, but, there's uh, that one kid that brings stuff, right? No, a whole bunch of them did. I got roses, and I got chocolate, and I got scented candles. It was really nice. Oh, okay. They wow, scented candles. Man. Yeah. That's, uh, I remember when I was a kid, you know, I'd, I'd get mom to make some baked goods, you know, or something. You'd take some baked goods, you know. I guess oh, I got, people I got don't do that too. anymore. No, I got those also. Oh, yeah? The, there was, there's a teacher. Oh, women teacher cook today, these me. days? Oh, yeah. I didn't know women yeah, still baked. A whole container full of hand-baked goods from one of my kids. It was great. And you got to realize, too, for all of the gifts that they brought me that week, I was only a long-term sub. That wasn't even my class for the whole year. Okay. Well, you made that like a bandit then. You did all right. So I, I don't know how we got did. here, but I, love I don't trust kids, cops. Anyway. Let me put it that way. Okay, I well, don't trust cops. I have a hard time with you, and I have a cousin who's a cop. I want to call him a good cop. He really believes in what he does, but then again, there's the argument that they don't stop the corruption going on and don't stand up for what's right. So I can see that. So I'm reluctant. To oh, he believes in it so much he'll use the nightstick to enforce it. He believes in it. Hey, hey my brother's in law enforcement. I, I know all about this. That, he doesn't use. But you know they nightstick. brainwash these guys, right? I mean, don't you get that feeling well, that, that that these guys go through these like training academies and they're told you're the white knights of nobility. Without you, no, no, crime no, no. would be rampant cousin, and the whole world would fall no. apart. My cousin was brainwashed long before this because he was in the Marine Corps. <laughs> oh, he went to a public school, so he was already brainwashed. No, he was in the Marine Corps. He was in the, in the Marine Corps. <laughs> oh, but anyway. man. Okay, he's super okay, brainwashed so then. This article, this article is talking about how – um, I, I've got to say, the feelings which on this article, it made me laugh, but then it made me mad, <laughs> and, and you'll, you'll understand why. Okay, so in Miami, Ohio, I want to say, was this Miami, Ohio? It, is, it comes from an Ohio. What? It comes from Miami, an Ohio. Miami, Ohio. Listen, it comes from a – It was, this was an Ohio news station, but it's it's from Orlando. There is a Miami, Ohio, but it's not – it's not this one. This is actually Orlando. So apparently what you happened – You can't sunbathe in Miami, Ohio. Probably not. But what happened is that there is an officer that was suspended after pulling over a speeding driver 
and the speeding driver turned out to be his superior. Okay, so <laughs> so Lieutenant David Romrus, he tried to pull rank and was taken to the ground by Officer Marcel Jackson. And Jackson was wearing a GoPro camera. He captured the entire incident, and he said he didn't um, know that he was even pulling over a fellow cop. So the video showed Officer Jackson pulling over a white Chevrolet, and the Chevrolet refused to stop at first. When the driver, who turned out to be Romrus, did stop, Jackson asked for his license and proof of insurance. And when he, um, that's when he says Romrus flung the door open and, and lunged at Jackson. Okay, and so they're sitting here fighting, and Jackson said, I'm like, I don't know who you are, bro. I don't care if you're a lieutenant or whoever you are. So now both officers are being investigated. Lieutenant Romrus has been reassigned, and Jackson's been suspended. Why was Jackson suspended? Now, part of me is saying, dude, he was just doing his job. The other part of me is saying, why do we care? He's a cop. So I'm really confused about this. Yeah, that is bizarre. You know, it, it's strange though. But really, if if and this as you're telling me this, I'm, I'm thinking, if the guy wouldn't have gotten physical with the arresting officer because he was a fellow officer, you know, they probably would have given him a pass on it. I mean, that goes on all the time. Well, the thing is that I guess L- Lieutenant Romrus was reassigned, and he didn't lose his job or get disciplined because he is a lieutenant. But Officer Jackson, who was just doing his job per what the cops tell him to do, was also doing his job. But the lieutenant threw and pitched a fit, so he had a hissy fit. And because he had a hissy fit, Jackson got in trouble. Where's the fairness in this? I mean, it's obvious to see that the upper echelon of the cops, they think they're above the lower cops. We've got a serious dog complex going on here. Yeah, the whole thing sounds really bizarre. I mean... Why would they suspend the arresting officer? He wasn't doing anything wrong. I mean, if the other guy did not have his badge or papers with him to say that he was a cop, and he's sitting here refusing to prove his identity and show his proof of insurance, then he should be in trouble. But no, he gets reassigned, and the arresting officer got suspended. Now, again, my conundrum is, This guy was doing his job, and that's not fair. But then the other part of me is saying, well, they're both cops, so why do I care? Yeah, I I don't quite understand the situation. I mean, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Unless they're trying to send a signal, like a message that says, look, you don't arrest one of your own. I mean, do you think maybe that's they're, they're trying to send that message? Well, it might be, but the other message they're sending is it doesn't matter. We're all above the law. We just enforce it. We don't have to follow it. Yes, I think you got the correct message there, Mandy. You get an A. Oh, thank you. But I'm the teacher. <laughs> you get an S. <laughs> you get an, no. I think you got it exactly right. I think that that just shows you that they're really above the law. So it doesn't matter. They can do whatever they want. I mean, it, yeah. go to YouTube. Put in police brutality. You see they do whatever they want. I mean, I was watching – somebody was putting one of these videos around. I was on dailypaul.com earlier, and somebody was sharing one of these videos. And anyways, it's like six minutes of cops just beating the crap out of people. And it – I mean, maybe the people were doing something wrong. Maybe they weren't. I don't know. But it looks pretty bad because when a cop just walks up and punches somebody in the face, that looks kind of bad. Well, what other what else have we seen lately? We've seen a cop not get into trouble for pushing a man onto the ground out of his wheelchair. What else? I mean, we've seen a number of these stories lately, and I, I don't know what to say. They they all think that they're above the law. They're not getting into trouble for things that were obviously wrong. What do you get from pushing a man out of a wheelchair onto the ground? I mean, what's the what's the motivation behind that? Well, you know, there was a video I was watching a while back, and uh, it was like a little mini documentary. And this guy wanted to prove that you can't you can't report on bad police officers. So he went to station after station, town after town, and said, "I'd like to file a, a complaint against an officer." Every time, it was pure intimidation. And in some cases, they chased him out of the, the the police department, tackled him, and arrested him. Because he refused to give them a license, and he said, look, 
I don't want to start any trouble. All I want to do is get a form I can fill out and say, I've got this complaint. Well, who's the officer? Who are you? Let me see your license. And he would ask him, well, sir, is it required by law that I show you my license before I you know, file a complaint? And they were like, I'm telling you what the law is, and I'm telling you you have to show me your license. I mean it was just stuff like that over and over again. So, I mean it's no wonder that only half the country has any faith at all in the police department. Yeah, they're not protecting anybody. You know, they're just not. Well, you are the first line of defense. Remember that. Yeah, I'm a I'm a bad egg. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, well, no, you know, I think we've given that up. I think we need to return to that. You know, used to people didn't sit around unarmed and just wait and hope that 30 minutes or an hour later a cop was going to show up and protect them. We used to protect ourselves. So if someone came through your door, they better be ready. No more. We don't have that type of society anymore. No, you're right about that. You're right about that. We don't at all. Um, people rely way too much on government and law enforcement, and we're seeing the repercussions of that today. Well, I don't have a gun, but I have a katana sword, a hatchet, and a staple gun. <laughs> well, I feel safer than the John offense. carries a staple gun. The staple gun is the by far the Hey, if you get it in somebody's eye, own. hey, if you get it in someone's eye, they're not going to come after you. They're done. They're out. Oh, one of my students was playing with a stapler on my desk, and a staple went straight through his his uh, thumb. So, yeah, it can be pretty nasty. Dangerous. It can. Now, I will say this before we go on to the next article, that if anybody wants to share their thoughts, that they want to talk to us, share their comments, if they have something they'd like to share on the air, bring up themselves, you can feel free to call in at 347-324-3704. Four. That's the line, and we'll be glad to put you on the air with us and talk, provided what you have to say is constructive. Um, otherwise, you can also join uh, not, us. Am I allowed? Can I do that too? What? I just bring up an article that we, we don't have in our lineup. I just want to brag. Yeah, hold on. Let me finish this and inviting people to come <laughs> join us, and then I'll be glad to let you bring in an article. Um, also, you can join us in the chat room if you go to freedomizerradio.com. There is a little tab off to the side that says chat room. Please feel free to click on that, create a name or an identity, and just jump right in. Also, if you create a name and we get enough people going to chat in the chat room or get enough people present, then the chat, the chat room powered by Bark, will give you uh, bitcoins, random bitcoins, micro bitcoins for free, and they have micro bitcoin lottery as well. So come join, earn a few bitcoins, and, and come talk to the great host of the PM show. Also, one more reminder that if you miss us tonight, you miss part of the show, you want to hear it again, we will be on the Voluntary Virtues Network at YouTube um, tomorrow. Our show will go on from 4 to 6 Eastern. And you can catch us there, the PM Show on Voluntary Virtues Network at YouTube. So please, please listen. We want, we love to get the station hopping and get a lot of views and get a lot of people subscribed to the Voluntary Virtues Network. Okay. Now, you want to bring up an article. Please go for it. Okay. <clears throat> this is something I just found on AfterDawn.com, which I read a lot. It's great. It's kind of a geek site. It's all the tech news. And I'm always keeping up with what's going on with peer-to-peer People sharing movies, music, whatever on the internet, because I'm sure you remember a couple of years ago, the music industry 10 years ago went bananas. Went, oh my God, these kids are downloading MP3, so they started suing everybody. Do you remember when that was happening? Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, yeah, they, they were like suing 13 year olds, you know, that had downloaded three MP3s on their grandmother's computer. I mean, it was like, it got nuts so after a while. Well, then there was the big wave after the MP3 downloads, then there started BitTorrent, which was much faster, so now you could download movies. And I remember uh, I'd go to a movie, and they would have an artist on there, and they'd say, piracy kills movie jobs. Do you, do you remember that, the whole campaign they did against piracy oh, yeah. for that? And and they yeah, called it so piracy yeah. to make it sound really bad. Now, in the old days, I would have a videotape, like a VHS, and I'd say, hey, Amanda, I just watched this really cool movie. I bought this the other day. Here, you want to borrow it? And you would borrow it, and you would watch it too, right? Now, when we were kids, we called that borrowing. Now, the kids now do it on the Internet, and they call it piracy. Sounds horrible, right? And they've talked about for years, this is going to destroy all these industries, you know. Like, oh, yeah, 50 Cent is going to, you know, like, you know, be impoverished or something because I downloaded one of his MP3s. So they've been but screaming you know for years. Well, 
What? Quite honestly, you know what? Calling it piracy, though, with as popular as pirates are these days, kids will probably think, hey, cool, pirates. I'm awesome because I'm a pirate. <laughs> Arg. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, and for years I've been saying, look, you're not losing any money because you've got these poor college kids who are downloading a couple of MP3s. They don't have the money to go buy the stuff anyways, so they don't buy it. They wouldn't buy it anyways. You're not losing any sales. It's 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 there's it's a net it's it's just a break even. You're not really losing you might lose some sales. This is another reason why I'm against copyright. Well finally some economist said, I'm gonna go through and try to find some empirical evidence that it actually has an impact. Here's what this economist found. Uh Coleman Strump, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Uh it's, he's the professor at the University of Kansas School of Business. And this is what he says. Piracy has no effect on box office results. Zero. And what he did, he released the data, and his conclusions are based on um, 150 of the largest films that were, were released between 2003 and 2009. And what he did is he used the data coming from BitTorrent trackers, and then he compared that against the revenues to try to figure out, okay, is – the more piracy there is, is there a lack of sales? You know, is there some sort of impact? Can we show there's some sort of relationship? And he says there's no evidence. And my empirical results of file sharing having a significant impact on theatrical revenue. Uh, Strump says my best guess or estimate is that file sharing reduced the first month box office by $200 million over 2003 to 2009, which is only three-tenths of a percent of what movies actually earn. I am unable to reject the hypothesis that there is no impact at all on fire sharing or revenues. So what he's basically saying is it's not changing the box office results, and it, even if it's changing some of the revenues, they can't prove it. So – and I've been saying this for years because it, you know what's really interesting to me? You know, I think more than a month ago we did the um, – we did the Hollywood hypocrisy. The what was it like? The ten biggest Hollywood hypocrites. Yeah. Remember that? Yes. Our uh, the celebrities. Yes. Right, the celebrities. But doesn't it drive you crazy? The celebrities are most of them all leftists, and they want to give away free stuff like that comes from our tax revenues. So they want to take money from us and give it away like Santa Claus. But somebody gives away their work and they flip out. Hmm. Who flipped out? Hollywood does. Like you've had some of these artists like uh, – who was the the band, the really crappy heavy metal band in the late 80s, early 90s? Metallica. They were suing people <laughs> left and right. They were encouraging it. They were calling everybody criminals. You oh, know. yeah, because Lars, 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 uh, Lars Ulrich had a huge vendetta out against um, Napster. Napster. Yep. Yes. Well, he's actually – we can thank him for making peer-to-peer -peer so popular because I remember at the time I, I didn't download off Napster. So I'd heard of this guy going, hey, they're giving away free music on Napster. I said, what? Where is this? How do I get involved in this? Where do I find this? And so I started downloading on Napster like right in before they shut it down, but I only knew about it because that guy threw such a fit. Yeah, Lars Ulrich had a big fit against Napster, and you know, you and I talked about this before. There are artists out there who don't care if people are downloading their music. I mean, David Bowie posts all of his stuff for free because he says that if they like it, they're going to go out and purchase it. Yeah, support the artist, and if you're not going to at least purchase the music, then you should go to their live concerts and try to support them that way. I mean, that's what I've done for years. I've downloaded music for years. But I go and I spend the money to see them at, uh, live in concert, and so that's my way of supporting yeah. the artists. And I, I think we had, if we didn't have copyright laws, that that's more of what people would do, and people would feel a responsibility. Hey, if I want this to continue, then I have to support it. Yeah, and there will be people who won't follow that, but I mean, you're going to get a lot less backlash if the artist was just cool about distributing their music, you know, encouraging people to listen. Yeah, uh, you know, it's funny. A lot of people don't know this, but when radio first came out, they tried to get the radio shut down because – and the rationale was, wait a minute. You can't let people listen to music for free. <laughs> well, it's not for free oh, no. because radio stations are paying out the butt for it, so technically it's not free. Oh, yeah, they it's free are. to the public. And it's not well, yeah, and I've always been against that. 
Well, technically, it's not free to us either because we have to sit through those god awful commercials. And it seems lately that there are more commercials than there is music. Oh yeah, that's why I don't listen to radio anymore. Radio is a, a desolate wasteland. I mean, very rarely does anyone of any quality get put on the radio. I will say this: I'm a huge fan of the uh, the, the Black Keys. I don't know. Do you like the Black Keys? I don't know really anything about them except their name. Ah. Uh, the Black Keys, their new album, uh, what is it, Turn Blue? Oh, um, it's the best album they've done, I think. Anyways, it's actually getting radio play now. They're playing one song on there, uh, Fever, off of the uh, single. But you know, I don't know if they'll continue to play it. But that's actually one of the few decent bands that's on the radio. You've got to listen to that album. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to that's it. Right. You're I was supposed, supposed to send, send it over to me. Yeah. I know. I was supposed to send you a list with links. I will do that. All right. Actually, let yeah, me do that right do now. That. So now that we're done with that well, article, let's talk about whatever else you want to talk about. Okay. What I had up next actually was the somewhat controversial arrest of a man in – not arrest. He got fired. Sorry. Um, from marijuana in the state of Washington. So as we know, the state of Washington legalized pot, and there was a guy who was the first person in Spokane to buy legal recreational marijuana, and – he got fired from his job because of what his company called a misunderstanding. So they saw him on television standing in line to be the first person in Spokane to buy pot, recreational pot, okay? I'm not sure that that would matter much to me. I don't really think I care about being the first in line to buy recreational pot. Um, but after they saw him on the television, they he was ordered to take a drug test by his part-time employer, which is a temp agency called True Blue Labor Ready, after he was seen on news reports being the first customer in the city to buy legal weed. Okay, they said that they were not aware he had taken the day off, he was scheduled to work, that they saw him on TV, that he was under the influence, and that caused them to start a process of screening. Okay, and then when they realized that he was not on assignment, they reinstated him and said pot is legal, and we know that. So he got his job back, by the way, when when the story went viral, and they got caught, if you will. Mm, now, I'm probably going to totally blow your mind on this one. <laughs> I'm going to go a totally different direction. Are you ready for this, Amanda? I am. I, I think they should have fired him, and I'll tell you why. The reason yeah, why is I, yeah, I, well, I, and this, and I'll tell you the reason why. And this is, and let me let me back up and try to explain where I'm coming from. I think they should have fired him because if you have a truly free society, then anyone engaged in business or otherwise has the right of voluntary association. So if you say as part of your employment contract that we have a drug-free workplace because you're driving a truck or a forklift or you're doing something dangerous and you can harm others if you have something in your system. We have a zero tolerance. You have a right whether or not to accept those terms in a free society. You can walk away and say, well, you know, I'm not going to accept that. I'll, I'll deliver pizza because they, they won't drug test me at Pizza Hut. Fine, no problem. But also I wouldn't have just in my society not only would pot be legal, but crack would be legal too. Now, you may not be able to get a job if you're on crack. But there would be no man in a, you know in a, a, a freaking costume breaking down your door, putting a gun in your face, trying to stop you either. So I really you? don't I, like I don't like your answer. I don't like it because listen, uh, I'll tell you, I don't like your answer. I don't like it because this man was technically on his own time. He had taken the day off, so he was on his own time, and he used it on his own time, and then they just randomly, randomly in quotation marks, decided to drug test him the next day because they saw him on TV. First of all, that's not a, that's not a random drug test. They knew darn well what they were doing, okay? And well, now there's, there's a, something called reasonable suspicion, and, and employers do use that. And that's definitely reasonable not, suspicion. If he's on TV. <laughs> it was not impairing his job. He was off that day. So it wasn't impairing the job. That's the, it's not, So you would be for the government using force to make them hire him back. Because in a, in a society, that's what you would have to do. 
If every transaction is voluntary. Hey, the government did not inf- did not force him to hire him back. Media pressure and people saying, hey, that was not fair and outrage, that's what got him hired back because the video went viral. The article went oh, viral. Oh, no, no, I'm fine so- with that. They made a different decision after they thought about public opinion. Now, that's still voluntary, though, so I have no problem with that. But if I was a business, I would fire him, and let me tell you why. Because business has to be able to assess risk. Part of being in business is looking at the risk in which they present, and there's a cost associated oh, with that risk. Lord. And oh, man. When you ha- when you have, hold on. When, when, you have, when you have employees who engage in that, that kind of behavior on time or off time, you're going to have – you're going to, statistically, you're going to have more accidents. You're going to have higher costs. I mean this is what I do, so I know a little bit about it, and it's going to it negatively business. Now, what right does that person have to go in there and say some of that stuff is still in his system? And he has a right to endanger others now. Now, I'm not saying that I even want government to enforce it. I wouldn't want government coming in and saying everybody has to be drug tested for every job. No, of course not. But if if a, a job – or if a business wants to do a good job of mitigating risk, then that's part of the, that's part of the process. That's what they have to do. Oh, I still don't like your answer and your little – My answer is all insurance. voluntary though. It's oh, all I don't voluntary. Like it, I don't want the government I'm to do not, anything. I'm not well, saying voluntary that society should've... doesn't mean you can do whatever you want because other people will react to whatever you want, and they can decide Look, I... whether they want to associate with you or not. Right, I know, and I don't want the government involved in this at all. I'm glad he got reinstated because the video went viral. Um, I think he's an idiot personally because he wanted to be the first in line to buy a pot in Spokane, and now all he cares about <laughs> I'm not is sure the he's a that- great employee. <laughs> oh, he was, oh, he's sitting here saying, oh, it's okay. I'm still number one, though. Okay, this is what he's <laughs> saying. So, you know, I really – it's not about this man in particular. It's about the fact that he was on a day off, and he was recreationally using pot on his day off. Now, as for your, oh, there's a risk associated, blah, 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 I understand that that's your job, but I know lots of people who function better on pot than they do when they're not high. So that <laughs> does not – that does not work for me because when I was in high school, I had chemistry with this guy. Okay, his name was Kofi. Kofi was in my chemistry class. Kofi consistently got high A's in that class. No pun intended. High A. No pun intended. But he got he got A's like the highest grades in the class. And I'm like, Kofi, dude, you must like really study your tail end off. And he's like, No, I smoke up every day before I come to school. He goes, No, it's I hit nothing. the bong, baby. <laughs> he does. And he says, I don't study. I just smoke and I come in. And I'm telling you, he's not lying either. I've seen people function better high. So if it were in a Hey, that's fine drug, in a free society. If you can do that, I, I don't have a problem with it. As long as you don't endanger other people, hurt other people, I don't care what you do. Smoke it up. Well, and that's what I'm saying. So I'm not buying your argument. Pass me the if bowl. It another, if it was another drug, if it was another drug, I <laughs> might agree with you if it was another drug, but not, not pot. I don't – not with the pot. Now, again, the guy is saying, I'm still number one. It doesn't matter. I lost my job. I'm still number one. Okay, yeah. Well, <laughs> he hopes his – He also hopes his newfound fame can help him get into the marijuana grow business, and his story was written up in High Times, the magazine. He said – Oh, there's a pot magazine? Yeah, it's called High Times. You've never heard of High Times? I I mean, look at me. I I have no idea. I've never heard of this stuff. Are you square? You're square. Yeah, I must be. I don't – I don't – I've never done any hard drugs in my entire life. I don't like – I guess I'm a bore. I just never – Pot's not a hard drug. I didn't say I didn't do pot. I just said I didn't do a hard drug. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. He says, he said, when I started this adventure and said I wanted to be the first guy to buy legal weed in Spokane, I made my choice. I don't blame anyone, and I don't regret it either. But I'm still number one. <laughs> okay. You he are number one. Actually, he said he's actually all right that it worked out. <laughs> Uh, hey, whatever so, makes you happy. Hey, I mean, I'm totally for a free society where if people want to smoke weed and deliver pizza at night because that's the only job they can get, that's fine. Or, hey, maybe you smoke weed all day and you're the most, you're the greatest freaking, you know, oil painter that we've ever seen, and you make tons of money and you're high all the time. I don't care. That's, I mean, that's your business. Well, yeah, but, but if, you, if you go I, to an employer, 
That's different. What's like that? Your answer. No, I still don't like your answer. I, I don't like hey. that you should be sticking up for this guy. All right, let me ask you this then. Okay, what okay. about Duck Dynasty? Do you think A and E had a right to fire Duck Dynasty guys? Um, it's their network, but I think they're stupid for doing it. Right, I agree. I agree. They may be stupid, but and and people were saying we got to stand up for Phil's Fourth Amendment right. Nobody came in. No government came in with a gun and said Phil couldn't say it. A and E just said Phil, you can't say that on my network. Oh, guess what? It's their net now. On the other hand, A and E had to deal with the backlash from the public, and it was pretty bad. And A and E quickly took Phil back. But you know, and I don't know much about the show. I only I only read a little bit about the controversy. Um, but I did read the guy's comments. I got really irritated on Facebook. Because people said <laughs> run around Facebook and other social media saying that all Phil did was quote the scripture. That's not what he did. He quoted the scripture. No, he then he continued a little disgusting narrative. What? Well, well yeah, he, really he quoted did. part of the scripture from when I. Well, no, no. I know what I'm saying though is he continued his own little narrative afterwards. That's what offended people. Was the narrative afterwards? It offended me. Well, I don't – I'm not involved with all that mess. I don't really care what he said. It's just I don't. I'm not interested in Duck Dynasty whatsoever. I'm not. Um, I just think uh, – I don't guy, know why people sit around and watch that show. I don't get it. I've like, what's, seen it. What's the point it's, of this? It's all right. I mean, the show is, is okay, but I'm telling you, no, I'm I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I've seen it before. Long, long-bearded men who make duck calls or – Whatever. Yeah, I'm good. And they got totally some good, good looking that. wives. What's with that? I don't know. I'm not gonna even get into that with you. I don't care. I don't care. No, and the I whole thought, thing about I saw the, their wives and I was like, How in the world did they, they do that? I'll tell you how they did that. The apparently the beards <laughs> and the look, they're all a gimmick. These guys grew out their beards, but there are pictures of them when they first got with their wives. They are clean cut, they look like preppy guys. And they're good-looking men. That's really how it happened, honestly. Hmm. I'll I'll try to find a picture for you. There are pictures circulating. I'll find a picture for you, and I'll put put it on your Facebook page. Oh, yeah, that, out, that's what I really want. Uh, of course you do. I do want to give a shout-out to Liberty Phoenix, who has joined us in the chat room, you know, one of the people who helped fill your shoes while you were out for two weeks. Oh, yes. Thank you, Liberty Phoenix. And he's totally stoked that they are winning um, Bitcoins in the chat room. John Morland, you should go in and you should try to win some Bitcoins. Maybe maybe I will. And you answered my question. What? I was about to say, is Liberty Phoenix a guy or a girl? But it's obviously landed Liberty Phoenix is a guy. Liberty Phoenix is certainly a guy. Yes. I can tell you that much. Well, I can't right, keep so up. What, I can't keep up with people's screen names. Hey, I'll, I'm gonna vouch for you. He's a guy. He's certainly a guy. So, um, yeah. So he helped fill your shoes while you're out, and he had fun doing it. So I hope next time that you are out, um, he will help me out again. It was a pleasure having him on, and he was on with Danica also. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I need to go back and listen to that full episode because I just edited it, so I didn't get to hear the whole thing. Yeah, last week, like, you didn't want to listen to it because Danica and I were talking about video games and rappers. But, like I said, it actually led back to a free state, a stateless society. So well, I listen, I listen to pieces of it. But that, I didn't get through all of it. Yeah, we well, should go back and take a listen. And I'm going to tell you now, it's it's that magical time where we have to play some of our favorite, favorite commercials. So I'm going to play a few commercials, and we're going to be back right after these messages. Sweet. You know the Constitution like the back of your hand. You've read books, listened to podcasts, attended lectures, surfed websites, and watched videos. You've made liberty your life's goal, but something seems to be missing stickers from libertystickers.com exercise your freedom of speech with the world's most dangerous bumper stickers that's libertystickers.com but wait 
There's more. You can buy Liberty Snickers wholesale. Get them for 99 cents each when you put 100 or more in your shopping cart in any combination. Sell them or give them away. They're great for gun shows, flea markets, fairs, outreach, and more. Earn extra money, promote freedom, and spread the word. Need custom stickers, labels, or decals for your organization or business? Liberty Stickers makes them. Go to libertystickers.com to order or call 877-873-9626. Libertystickers.com, the world's most dangerous stickers. Hi, I have a question for you. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Do you want a company that provides good quality ingredients and does not use artificial sweeteners? Look no further. Genesis Pure has a complete lineup of health and wellness, sports performance, and superfruit juices like noni and mangosteen that are pure, wild harvested with no binders and fillers. The philosophy is simple. Cleanse the body of toxins, balance the body's pH and hormones, and build the body nutritionally. Every race has a starting line, and yours is cleanse, balance, build. Sign up for at least a 25% discount and include auto ship of at least one product to start building up 20% back in points for free products. It's a win-win. Help fund our operation while you fund your body nutritionally. Start your journey at genesispure.com backslash freedomizer health. Again, that is genesispure.com backslash freedomizer health. Want to spread awareness to your neighbors, family, and friends about what is going on in our country today? It may be things you already know, like the large number of FEMA camps spread around this country to lock up citizens like you and me. What legislators are doing to strip states and people of their sovereign rights. Or legislation giving states the power to force vaccinate under a declared state of emergency. Do your neighbors understand what is going on? William Lewis Films offers the perfect tools to inform our population about this government's tyrannical shift from a constitutional republic to a despotic democracy. Films like 911 Ripple Effect, Beyond Treason, One Nation Under Siege, Washington You're Fired, Camp FEMA, Enemy of the State, Don't Tread on Me, Blood of Patriots, The Ron Paul Uprising, even 911 in Plain Sight, William's first production, are all available at WilliamLewisFilms.com. Get your DVDs today at WilliamLewisFilms.com. Educate against the police state. Okay, and we're back. Those are great commercials. No, we're, we're not. Commercial break? Yes, we are. No, we're yes, not. Yes, we are. We're not? No. No, no. Not yet. I need another second. Hold on. i got to give you a beer. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. Well, Mr. Moreland is going to go <laughs> get a beer. Great. Thanks, I'll wait, I'll wait a minute. Oh, wait. Yeah, I guess wait we can come back since break. we're already back. You had time back. to go get a beer. This is your hey, problem. I was trying to get the black keys uploaded to my Dropbox so I can send it over to you. Oh, uh, this is okay. true. Yeah. All right, you're going to get it in just a minute. There we go. Okay, ooh, oh, my keys. Okay, okay, proceed. Um, well, I was just typing to my friend on Facebook. He wants to listen to our show, and I was warning him that the show is somewhat politically charged. So he is going to have to take that as a warning. But anyway, so we have lots of stuff to talk about. I think one article that you really, really liked was the feds are investigating private citizens for mocking Obama at a parade. Oh, did, did I hit the really, really like button on Facebook? I didn't know they had one of those. Yeah, you did. You really did. I think it was the <laughs> pictures. Um, so a man in Nebraska is getting more attention than he bargained for when he entered his home-built float on the back of a flatbed truck in the Norfolk Parade for Independence Day. And so basically, he built this outhouse on the back of a flatbed truck, and on the side it says Obama Presidential Library. And outside of the outhouse is a zombie-like figure that some say resembles the president. So the Nebraska Democratic Party denounced the float as racist, and Eric, Eric Holder's Department of Justice dispatched a member of its community relations services to investigate. 
I think the first thing they got wrong with this article is that they called it Independence Day. It should be called Lack of Independence Day. And that would be that would John, be a good name for it. Apparently, John Moreland is vacuuming the floor. I'm not vacuuming the floor. I am having some uh, audio issues. I don't know what's going on. I'm kind of getting some crackling. Oh, I don't hear the crackling, but I hear something that sounds like you're vacuuming the carpet. I am. I, I do housework while we're while we're on the figure. You know, I'm a multitasker. Do a little housework. Can you really hear that? I got the fan on in the room. Dude, I give you more credit because I don't do housework off the air, let alone on the air. So more power to you. I, I'm not really you. doing housework. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I'll leave not. that for Nina. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Poor Nina. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna hey, say about that. She she folds my clothes. I gotta say, I'm uh pretty happy about that. Well, yeah, I don't I don't like to do laundry, but it's one of those necessary evils. But um, yeah. So laundry. anyway. So this guy makes this float on the back of his flatbed truck, and it is the an outhouse with Obama Presidential Library on the side with a zombie-like figure that some say resembled President Obama. So apparently this, this is saying that this man's First Amendment rights to the Constitution, you know, obviously that guarantees freedom of speech to all Americans, and the courts have upheld that right staunchly, particularly in the realm of political speech. So he did nothing wrong. I mean, he's expressing himself. But have we really gone to such a social, socialist nation that the president is also going to decree that we are not allowed to say anything adverse in the effect that we don't like him or we don't like what he's doing? I mean, have we gotten to that point? No, I wouldn't call it socialist, but I would go with authoritarian. And it has a nicer ring to it, doesn't it? Authoritarian. And, you, you know, well, I, I don't know what your mind conjures up, but I think of an iron fist. I like that. I like it a lot. I don't care, but I don't care to <laughs> sit. I don't care to sit and sugarcoat it. And I think you gave it a different term, and it sounds more sugarcoated. I don't care to sugarcoat. Oh, I I thought authoritarian sounds more evil, more like dictatorial. Authoritarian doesn't. It? That's technically what it is. Okay, maybe it sounds maybe it sounds nicer, but I don't think so. <laughs> Socialist to me sounds nicer because it's like it's for all the people for you to shut up. If you shut up, that's going to help all the people. You know. That, uh, anyways, I digress. Yeah. Anyway, we do have a caller, so I'm going to invite the caller in. All right, area code seven zero eight, you're on the air. Hello, area code seven zero eight. That's you. You got to talk to us. Hopefully, you're going to disagree with me. That's what I'm hoping for. How's this? Can you hear me now? Yes, I know who hey, this is. Hey, we oh, got the Verizon yeah. Wireless guy. Amanda, how did you get him on? <laughs> I charge by I the have, hour. I have, I have awesome connections. What can I say? Hey. <laughs> you know, guys. I like, course. I like the geeky glasses. They, they really, they work for you. Oh, well, you know, it gets me out of the poontang. <laughs> But you know, well, I don't think we can say that. The library is racist. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to mute that later. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to edit him out. Um, okay, well, we're, guy? we're not gonna talk any more about that. We're just gonna continue on. I'm sure that mystery caller has some stuff that they would like to add. So go ahead, mystery caller. You know, I'm just saying, of course, that that library is racist. Are you kidding me? For for a black president to have his own library, where where do you see a black guy with a library? Come on. It's just it's just flat out racist. All right, that's a joke, but come on. This is freaking outrageous. Okay, of course the Democrats are gonna say, Oh, you're being racist. You can't challenge anything that we say. You can't have free speech. Are you fucking kidding me? This guy is whoever that Democrat is needs to pull his head from the rear quarters of his body and wake up. Because, you know, free speech it does exist. You don't need a freaking piece of paper to say that you have the right to do it either. Uh, the fact that I'm breathing means that I have the right to say whatever the f- I want to say anytime I want to say it. Period. And well, that goes I think he has editing every software single running. Yeah, oh, I think my... so. Do you? You have well, editing software. This guy's advanced. Hey, uh, let well, me no, let me throw something out, out there at you. Brain. 
were, were you did you feel the same way under and this is just a litmus test did you feel the same way under george w bush when they had free speech zones when he would come to town they would move people 10 miles away put them in a fenced in area and call that a free speech zone so that they could oh, you they know pick at the president with it they still have it. It doesn't matter if you're white or black. That's that's just disgusting. Well, no, no, that's, under president. A, a, a I'm just saying, I'm just curious. Under Bush, they did this sort of thing, and it enraged me. But people seem to, especially the right, seem to give it a pass at the time. Oh well, of course, you know, they, it's their it's their sociopath, it's their psychopath that's in the White House that is is decreeing these things. So of course, you know, well, this is our guy, so he can do no wrong. But you know, if you got a Democrat in there, oh, that's terrible. No, he's he's a evil little. Demon or something to that effect. Yeah, he's got, but, he's got that Monday. diva side of his name. Weren't you taught that as a small child? Listen, people with diva sides their name, they're bad people. Not good. Yeah, well, see, that's the problem with public schooling. It, all it does is indoctrinate children to have an input-output uh, mindset. They don't use utilize critical thinking because if you utilize critical thinking, you wouldn't be in a public school. You'd be like, Ma, take me the heck out of here. This place is a joke. Yeah, well, you know, they don't – I mean, they don't teach kids, like, philosophy or how to think. They just teach them information. They want to regurgitate it. Well, absolutely. Memorize this stuff, and if you don't memorize it, well, then you failed, and you're a failure at what? life. And then you've got all well, these you know kids what? going around shooting up schools and being depressed. I mean, what do you expect? You're and drugs. Them. You know yeah. There are teachers out there who know uh -oh, here the we truth, go. and they, they strive to teach <laughs> the actual <laughs> truth. <laughs> And sadly, uh, Mandy, there is not enough teachers like you. Thank you. See, I that's, appreciate that. That's the problem we've got is these kids, it's just being overrun. You've got 99% of the teachers who are teaching these kids these things. And, and you know, to a degree, so they're not nefarious. They're teaching what they believe to be true. And that we, what they do is they read right out of the textbook. This is why I'm so against textbooks because textbooks give you one person's particular point of view. They don't ever say, read this document. You know, They don't ever tell kids, listen, read the Articles of Confederation, read the Constitution, um, read Lysander Spooner while you're at it, kid, and then we'll have a discussion about right. it. No, they don't want to do that. <laughs> well, you know what? According to the public school do um, doctrine, though, the Abraham Lincoln is one of the best presidents to ever live, and he was horrible. Oh, my God. That racist, federalist little... Oh, Twit. I can't even say the word. Twit, yes, twit. That man. Are you talking about Lincoln? Lincoln? Twit. Yes, yes, that man was such hey, a racist. He was America's first dictator. Funny. We should all have he reverence for him. And worship the giant the first. statue. Washington was the first. Heck, the, the you, ten you, presidents we had before Washington were the first dictators. I mean, come on. Anybody that well, has I mean, that he took it to a new level is a dictator because power corrupts absolutely. There's no leeway for that whatsoever, and corrupt power deserves no obedience, period. Well, no, I'll give you that. I mean, I, I'm just – I guess my, my point was that he took it to a new level. I mean, he went far beyond what anybody and – th and that's typical. You know, it's like I, I remember Lou Rockwell one time says, why is it that every president makes you yearn for his predecessor? Meaning that, you know, every guy is worse than the last one. And I think that's, oh, yeah. that's uh, been pretty much true. You know, didn't you hear that uh, Dick words. Cheney said that? Didn't you hear Dick Cheney say that Barack Obama is the worst president of his lifetime? I mean, it's it's, it's a progression. <laughs> Every single president is the worst president of the lifetime because well, yeah, it's they're funny. the president now. I actually never thought it's I would Cheney. say this, but man, I would love to have Clinton back. Clinton was fun. <laughs> hey, he was Dick fun, Cheney? man. All he did was run and around Dick with Cheney. interns. I mean, he was fun. Didn't he bring us <laughs> NASA Cheney would and Gat? Dick Cheney would What's know that, because Dick Cheney's been Dick Cheney would know because Dick Cheney's been alive since the days of George Washington, so he would know <laughs> who the worst president is. Absolutely. Yeah, he really is a zombie. He he has no heartbeat. His blood just pumps continuously. Yeah. So horrible. Okay. Oh, and John, oh, you guys are, you guys are being hard on 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 Dick. Um, <laughs> no comment. No comment. Um, but um, John, this is. The, this is Ken the Liberty Phoenix. He helped fill your shoes two weeks ago. So. Oh, well, thank you, Liberty Phoenix. I, th I thought you had the Verizon Wireless guy on. I'm sorry. I'm disappointed, Liberty <laughs> Phoenix. I thought you were the Verizon Wireless guy. I I'm out. am the Verizon Wireless guy. Why don't you two take the show? I'm going to retire. <laughs> You're retiring? He's retiring? Yeah, I'm going to let you two take it. I'm going to go, like, I don't know, 
play bingo or something. It's a bingo night. It's eight o'clock. I, I can still get in. I love bingo. I love bingo. Don't just bingo. Hey, there's a few old ladies at the parlor that hold the seat for me. I told them I might be able to make it by eight, but I was not sure. <laughs> Got you. Okay, oh, you're bringing you up a Play your bingo, and we've got it. We've got this. <laughs> oh, boy, what I get roped into? <laughs> I have no idea. But we, should go, we should go on to the next article. I think we should. Um, and he can stay on the line with us, and he can share his two cents. But go for it. apparently there was a guy who went to get his car serviced, and he found a tracking device on the car, a GPS tracking device. So... Um, yeah, he took it in for an oil change. They found this FBI tracking device. Now, how did they know it was an FBI tracking device? When he contacted the company to find out the source of the tracking device, he was visited by a large group of FBA, FBI agents who had seen his post online, and they wanted it back. They found, he found out that he traced the device back to the company who only sells tracking devices to government agencies. So he doesn't know uh, why another crony capitalist his. company. He doesn't know why it's on his car, and he's freaking out because FBI agents visited him at his home. Now, there's nobody on the line right now who has any experience with the FBI randomly visiting their house. No, not, not at, at all. all. No. There's, so. Well, he, no, of course they never, didn't visit my house. He, no, they visited right. everywhere else. Now, here's the thing. This guy who went to get the oil change and discovered this device is a 20-year-old American citizen who's done nothing more than he's half Egyptian. He's not even into the liberty movement. He doesn't even care. He's not a sovereign citizen. He's a happy, tax-paying individual that has no clue what's going on, and still they're, oh, well, you're Egyptian, so we're going to track you. Is that that the gist of it? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. I think I need to take a look underneath my hood now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you really do. Um, he ended up handing over the device willingly and said that it has no involvement in anything dangerous or illegal and there's no reason for him to be under investigation. And it says based on discussions that were had when the agents were at his house, he got the impression that he had been under FBI surveillance for three to six months. So if that's it, it's he's rather lucky. Has he tried flying recently? Uh, has he tried flying? I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to be flying on Friday. I'll let you know if I successfully get through the to the checkpoints. <laughs> Good luck with that one. But, I don't do that crap. Well, I didn't pay for the ticket, so I'm flying out of town. But John Moreland is having technical difficulties on his end, so it's a great thing that you're on the line with me. You can help hold down the fort till he's able to come back on. Oh, well, of course. Good time. Yeah, you know, the, yeah, the FBI is just getting way, way. I mean, the whole, every single branch of the federal government is getting just way out there. I mean, they don't care. There's no accountability. Nobody's going to hold their hold them to the task. Nobody's going to hold their feet to the fire and say, stop doing this, or you're going to get shut down, or we're going to cut your funding. Nobody cares in Congress, so they're not going to do anything. There's never going to be any accountability as long as we have a government, period. That's how I see it at any rate. Well, you know, this guy is asking about um, his investigation, and they're giving him the standard answer. I can't really tell you much about it because it's still an ongoing investigation. So he doesn't even know why he's being investigated, and that is typical. So, yeah, obviously. Well, of course not. They're not going to tell him. You can't. What? You found this? Oh, well, give that, give that to us. No, no, don't even worry about it. Go back in your house. Put it back underneath right now. I mean, that's, that's how they work. You know, they, I'm sure the guy's got another three of them on there already, and he's probably, his house is probably bugged. Probably so. I do have a friend I'm talking to on Facebook right now who said, keep the device. It's on the car you own, so technically it's your property. Yep. They wanted they could buy it off him. Now, but then he'll okay, get squat have... and all that good stuff, and they'll kick down his door, and then he's going to have to buy new hinges and get a new dog. Well, there's a big hassle with that. And they probably won't even knock, and they'll just shoot somebody. That's what they like. That's their favorite oh, thing. Or they'll just yeah. throw flashbags in his, in, his, in his daughter's crib or something to that effect. Oh, no, that never happens. Come on now. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Now, uh, mini truth. Mini truth. We've got we to remember that. That doesn't happen. Now, speaking of government agents, 
We have to talk about the TSA agent in Florida who thought the District of Columbia was a different country. Oh, good Lord. So, apparently... It is a different country. I think this guy was on something. (laughs) It's not... It's um, it's a different planet. John, do not stick up for the TSA agent or you're going to get kicked (laughs) off the show. That is your last warning. When when me and Nina went to to, uh, Washington, we went to D.C., I posted a picture on Facebook. It was the Washington Monument, and I said, we've entered Mordor. <laughs> oh, you guys are so bad. John, if you stick up for this TSA agent, I'm kicking you off the show. That's all there all right, is I like this it. guy already. Okay, now listen. So this journalist is going through the TSA checkpoint in Orlando Airport when he was stopped by the agent who thought – the District of Columbia was a different country. So the the uh, journalist named Justin Gray told WFTV that he was confused. The agent looked at his driver's license and asked to see a passport. And the journalist, Mr. Gray, he says, "Why? I don't I don't even have my passport. Why do you need that?" So he stopped at a TSA and informed the supervisor of what happened because he was still very confused and upset after he was let through the through the checkpoint. So oh, don't get upset with those people. <laughs> They'll give you a cavity <laughs> search right there. Oh, no kidding. Man, when I kicked up a fuss a few years ago after going through security, they made sure to make my my journey miserable. They were horrible. But anyway, so <laughs> now they have standard fixed government this. service. They have fixed this and um the TSA gave a statement to the media saying all of the TSA agents have been given pictures of District of Columbia driver's license and informed that it is part of the United States. Well, so, you know, it's, it's very difficult to get uh, they people need to, that they need are to do, uh, knowledgeable, that are willing to, you know, sexually molest people. It's very hard to get smart people that want to sexually molest people. So I can't really fault them. I mean, they're, 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 Digging from the bottom of the pool right there. Well, you know, I just I think the whole thing is is still ridiculous. It's funny, it's funny that they asked for a passport. I mean, I'm surprised they knew what a passport was. To be honest with you. Okay, Mandy, I'm posting something, and I guess you can post it wherever you want. I'm posting this in the uh, show prep page, but if you okay. haven't seen this, you have to see this. It's called TSA Twisted Sexual Assault. And it's a music video, and you've got to watch it. Some college kid did this video, but it looks so professional and so well done. And it's a music video where this guy is groping everyone. He's a TSA agent. It will make you cry. You will laugh so freaking hard. I don't think you haven't seen it. Look at that is funny. Well, I will say that okay, we're going to the next. We're going to go on to the next stupid politician, and this would be Mr. Harry Reid. Who apparently doesn't remember? Oh, Harry Reid's my hero. Thomas. Don't say anything bad about him. Man, what happened to you? In the <laughs> two weeks you've been off, you've turned into a liberal. What is your problem? The Fed say to me. Actually, technically, I am a liberal, but you know, you're a classic Classical. liberal. It's a different thing. Yes, it's a different I'm thing. I'm sort of a classical liberal, but so are you still well, a minarchist then? Am I still what? A minarchist. A minarchist. Philosophically, I'm definitely an anarchist or volunteerist. Um, my practical side is a minarchist, but uh, <clears throat> even in my minarchist society, there'd be a voluntary tax, so there'd be no oh, forced okay. taxation. Okay, What's well, that? I'm going to tell you, I'll say this, that um, Harry Reid, in all of his <laughs> intelligent glory, has stated that the Hobby Lobby situation, it showed Reid that um, he's not too, it showed that he's not too clear on how the Supreme Court works because he said that the five white men rendered the decision on the court. Well, one of those men he's talking about is Clarence Thomas, and the last time I checked, Clarence Thomas is a black man. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have a really <clears throat> controversial opinion on this because you know what? If the oh, guy would have so come out – What happened to you? No, no, listen here. This is what drives me crazy. If that guy would have came out and said, this is what we expect from one Hispanic woman or two black men or whatever, the pe- people would be going freaking nuts. 
But he can walk out there and say, well, this is what we expect from five white men. Crickets. Crickets. And this is what's happening in this country. It makes me sick. It's it's open season on white people. Say whatever you want to about them. You can't dare say anything about a minority. And it's just it's so that's just, the funny it's thing because where I'm from, I am a minority. Where I'm from, white people are a minority. So, I mean, I'm <laughs> where are you from? Chicago land. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. My, my graduating high Detroit. school is eighty percent. My, my my graduating high school is eighty percent Hispanic. All right, I know what it's like to deal with racism, and it's a bunch of BS. Hey, so do they have a in it's Chicago? Never, it should never be tolerated, whether it's directed at white people, black people, red people, yellow, purple, Agreed. Martians. I don't care who it is. Oh, see, oh, I, see I'm going to blow you guys' mind. I think racism should be tolerated. Well, okay, I'm trying to figure out if John's trying to make good radio or if he really has these differing opinions. No, no. No, no, it's true. It's true. I really think that people should – in a voluntary society, if you want to associate with the people that you wish to associate with, and part of your criteria for associating with someone is based on their race, well, you have every right to do that. And exactly. if I find that practice despic- despicable, then I don't have to associate with you. But honestly, I would like to see um, a future uh, – like if you had some an anarchist city-state where you had different city-states with different rules and different – ways of living and people who wanted to live among others that were like them that was totally acceptable i don't i don't see the problem i think we get too obsessed with people have to accept everybody well what if they don't want to are we going to force them well no and they really don't have to accept everybody and i agree with that i mean there are people that i don't after i get to know them i don't care to have anything to do with them but i know we shouldn't be forced to have to to do that but you know i don't want to be when I could end up you know, being Wal- a fantastic people. Well, you know, Walter Williams. Need to end. Yeah, the double standards would drive me crazy. Walter Williams, the black economist, for those who don't know, uh, just wrote an article, and he was talking about the whole um, controversy with Donald Sterling. And his basic thing in the article was, who cares if the guy's racist? He's made millionaires out of, out of how many black people? So does it really matter? At the end of the day... They're getting paid by racists, but do they really care that they're getting paid millions of bucks by it? No. I'm sure they don't. They and probably now at this point, they care less. They're, all they're all worried about is the dollar bills. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Hey, dollars are green. Dollars, that's all I'm saying. And they're dollar worthless. Green. And they're worthless because they have a reserve <laughs> note at the top of them. Hey, we need, we need a Janet Yellen story because I tell you what, I read something about Yellen earlier because they're not going to stop the money printing. She said, baby, turn them presses up. And I want to talk about her, but I don't think you have any articles about her. I don't. I didn't see anything about her. I saw lots of articles. Oh, my God. I didn't see anything about her. i got to find this article here, just so we can talk about it. If she's sitting here saying – no, if she's sitting here saying to keep the money presses cranked, then it's obvious to me why Ben Bernanke lost his job because it sounds like she's full steam ahead with destroying the economy. Oh, uh, she's she's ready to go, and she, she dresses it up in some kind of language. She said, She called it – well, there's been some setbacks in the economy, or no, I think she used the term false starts. Well, we thought there was going to be a recovery, and there wasn't, so we got to print more money, guys. <laughs> I love the language they use. If you read the language, it's all dressed up, but it's like, listen, we're going to print money. That's all there is to it. I mean, you can dress it up however you want to. I need to find that quote from her. Well, they don't really have well, any other options. I mean, that's how – our 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 financial system works. The um, the the only oh, option that they have is to continue to print to print money. They can't stop. Well, they're in a box, money or else. Exactly. They're in a box. If they stop printing money now, the economy tanks. Mm-hmm. They need and to get the economy's so weak now. And, I don't think they can handle it. Well, of course. Well, not. I, I mean, will, that's how I they wanted it. You no. Know? I'm watching. I read an article. I didn't watch anything. I read an article from Ben Swan, and he the heading of his article says. Uh, liberal millennials are actual, actually libertarian, question mark. And this actually was by a guy named Joshua Cook. And it says, according to a recent Reason Roop survey, the majority of millennials, which is 53%, said they'd support a candidate who described him or herself as socially liberal and economically conservative. 16% were unsure, God. and 31% said they'd oppose such a candidate. So it says liberal to many millennials, 33%, just means belief in social tolerance, openness, and personal freedom. 
And far from preferring a Leviathan state, many millennials said that they were liberal because people should have freedom to do what they want in their personal lives without government interference, wrote Kathy Reisenwitz on townhall.com. So what do you think? Um, Well, you know, first I want to take issue with this description of libertarianism as social liberal and economically conservative. I hate that. Um, See, I don't. I don't think those distinctions are made. I think there's there's two basic premises if you're going that that you have to have if you're going to accept libertarianism, and that's the non-aggression principle and self ownership. And those two things they have certain implications, but I think trying to describe them the, the way they do is a terrible way to describe. Um, well, a lot of people would think, well, if you're liberal on social policy, you're for gay marriage. Well, I'm not for gay marriage, but then again, I'm not for straight marriage. I'm not for the state dictating. How anyone should be married, um, but Thank I do you, think that the younger generation is is much more libertarian. I think that's apparent. I mean, just from you know my own interactions with people um, in different you know and, and and I guess in different parts of society, my own interactions, and then on top of that, look at Rand Paul. Like him or hate him, he's seen as mo- more libertarian, and he definitely is than most of the other Republicans. And he is very favorable among the mainstream Republicans. He's very favorable among uh, independents. So, Rand Paul, don't get me started about that man. You and I talked about him earlier hey, today. I'm, I'm still I know, maintaining I need to find, the stance. Find that video. No, I'm still maintaining the stance about Rand that he's playing the game, that the people are buying into the game, but the establishment is not buying into the game. They see straight through the game he's trying to play, and they're not buying it. Now, the important thing that people need to remember is that, yes, if the the working class American is buying this uh, facade, the charade, and they're going to go out and vote for him, in the long run, they are still not the ones choosing the president. The electoral college is going to choose the president. And if the establishment has their way, Rand Paul will not be the candidate. Rand Paul will also not be the president. Heck no, they're trying to re- re-erect uh, or resurrect uh, uh, Mitt Romney. Have you seen all these stories out there? Oh, you know, oh, we could bring Mitt Tim, Romney back. <laughs> Tim or Jeb Bush. The last thing we need in office is another Bush brother. Oh, my gosh. The last thing we need in office is an office. <laughs> there you go. There That's we go. right. I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Yo. Hey, how about we just not have elections next time and we lead ourselves? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. now who's having the well, pipe I dreams? Will, <laughs> oh, book. come on now. Anarchism is a pipe dream, but it's a good one. Hey, if, I think if hey. man has a bright future and it's not going to be murder, war, and aggression, then it's anarchism or some form yeah. real close to anarchism. You know, in now, regards to have... Rand Paul, um, Davi Barker in his most recent uh, book, Authoritarian Sociopathy, one of his chapters is called uh, Ron Paul and the Lucifer Effect, and he pretty much says that he's glad – that things went the way they did because regardless of who gets in the power, even if Ron Paul won the presidential election, he still would have been corrupted by the power of that office. Um, there, there's, there's never been any two ways about it. When an individual takes a seat of power, that power will corrupt them regardless of how altruistic and benevolent they are. Um, so, I mean, he, he, he pretty much stated that he was, he was really glad that, that Ron Paul didn't win because he was not able to be tainted by the presidency. Mm, I would agree with that to, to a degree, great degree. I think power is extremely corruptible, and uh, I don't think anyone should have as near as much power as the president has. But oh god, no. And I and I was thinking, you know, the about voting for Kokesh for 2020. Um, oh, his yeah, whole he's platform run is a peaceful dissolution. <laughs> yeah, he wants a peaceful dissolution of the federal government. And mm-hmm. he doesn't go I'd to like jail. to believe that. Well, it's 2020. He's got he's got six years. He should only serve two. Oh, let, let me ask you. Uh, now that we're on this subject, I haven't heard. Did he get time? Yeah. Wow. I believe That's it was uh, yeah. eight years. Oh my God! Yeah, for wow. uh, for uh, having mushrooms. for having a gun. No, no, no it was for possession of mushrooms. He was no, he was he was he was um he was convicted in Virginia for possession of mushrooms. For possession of a freaking a fungus that grows naturally 
and that they, everybody they has the right to put in their body. They gave eight years for the mushrooms, was, yeah. not for the gun? I believe it. Yeah, he was only convicted on the mushrooms. Yeah, but you got to remember, in a society these days that puts a man in prison for life for dealing pot or selling pot or using pot, whatever, and then people who have murdered get off like, like two or three years, our society is screwed up anyway. Well, well, yeah, well no, that, this yeah. just pro- proves that the government goes after political dissidents in this country. I think there's oh, no yeah, doubt about that. But they have it out for him anyway, and all of us who follow him, we all know this. They have it out for him. They are trying to get him, and they're trying to put him in prison and put him behind bars as long as they can. We all know this. So now will he get out in two years? Will he serve two and then have probation? That's what I'm hoping for. Um, I'm banking, you know, time served, good behavior, all that good stuff. Uh, Hopefully he'll be out in two years. That's what I'm hoping on. Yeah, I I hope so too. He's a he's a major figure in our movement. You know, I think anybody being put in a cage is completely inhuman, and it's I think there's just an innate in humanity. I think there's something that is, is just the way we're built. We don't want to be constrained. I but I think there's a certain segment of the population that is obviously because we see it every day that's more acceptable of controls. But then when you have an individual who is like Adam Kokesh or like us. We're extremely focused on individual liberty and our right to do whatever we please as long as we don't harm another. I just don't know what that does to somebody. If you put me in a cage for two years, I don't know what that would do to me. I can't fathom. I mean, I don't watch any of the TV shows that supposedly what it would be like to be behind bars or talk about reforming your life or those boot camp episodes where those children are out of control so they throw them in the can. I don't watch any of that, so I don't know. Just the the thought of oh. being locked up in a cell for two years drives me crazy and scares me. Uh, yeah, so I'd like to think my... that he would I would like to think that he would just come out with a library of books that he's written because he was in jail for six months and he wrote Freedom. And Freedom is an amazing novel. Oh my God, it's probably one of the best ones I've read in a long time. Um, oh, wow. I didn't know that. I, I read it. And, yeah, he wrote freedom well, in, while he was in prison for six months. Well, Amanda, uh, something that you just made me think of, I don't know. Have you seen this video that's going around the internet? And it's a it's an old Sally Jassy Raphael, if you can remember. Do you remember the old talk show? Yeah, because you, you have those horrible that. old red framed tortoise shell Oh, glasses. yeah, okay. Do so you remember? Well, they had one of these out of control kids, right? It's a single mom, son. He's probably 12 years old, and he's out of control. So of course they bring on this guy that's in this like full uniform, full dress, like uh, drill instructor, you know, Marine Corps drill instructor. And the guy's an ex Marine Corps drill instructor, and he's yelling and screaming at this kid, and he's like, "You're gonna act right. You're gonna be better. I'm gonna be on. Th- do you want me to be your father?" And the kid starts crying, and he goes, "Yeah, I do." Yep. I and the guy says, "He doesn't have a dad." You got to see this. The drill sergeant's face is priceless. When this kid tells him, yeah, I want you to be my dad, this guy's face drops. He doesn't know what to yes, say to I, this kid. I saw that video. No, I saw that video because the kid doesn't have a dad. He doesn't have a dad. He said he wants a dad. So, you know, I, I don't know what to say for that video. I'm going to just file that under more propaganda even going to acknowledge it. Well, no, I thought it was actually an interesting – just. It's an interesting study of Case how study. humans work. It's an, it's an interesting example of how humans work. This kid didn't need anger and hate and didn't need to get beat down. He needed somebody to love him and take care of him. And that's just That's why you know. But that's why when I'm in the classroom, that's why I tell my kids constantly, I care about you, I love you, you can accomplish anything you want if you want to. And I tell them this continuously, and people are like, why aren't you sending them to the office? Why aren't you getting them to trouble? What is the principal going to do? The kid repeats the same pattern of behavior on a daily basis. The principal maybe sends them, keeps them in the office for a few hours and sends them back to class. That's not changing the behavior, so why would I keep sending them to the principal? I keep them in my room. I let them know I love them. I care about them, that I am there for them, and I believe in them. Do you know how many relationships I'm able to develop with these kids because I let them know I care, which is all they need? That's all they need. Well, you know, Stefan Molyneux is who really like opened my eyes to this this kind of stuff. Yeah, he's done a lot of stuff on you know spanking and children and that kind of stuff, and he's kind of made me see 
from from that point of view, how kids don't need that. They really need quite the opposite. Absolutely. Yeah, I almost got into a fist fight with my uh with my ex's father in law or stepfather because, you know, I I straight up my, my kids live with, with them and uh with my ex and her, her parents and so forth. And, you know, I straight up told them there you will not hit my child ever again and if I find out you guys do, you're gonna have I'm gonna be defending them. And he didn't take too kindly to that. And it, it Yeah, you know, I, I think there's there's a lot of people who were – I was raised that way, you know, and, and I mean it's 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 kind of something – it's more, almost tradition now that, you know, kids get out of line, they get a spanking. That's just the way it works, and more and more I'm just doubtful that spankings are, are, are really the answer. I think the one exception I would make if a kid harms another child or harms another human or hits another human, then I would say – you know, maybe the child deserves to be spanked at that point, but um, well, all that does I, is reinforce the negative behavior with a negative action. I mean, if, if if a kid hits somebody and you hit them for hitting somebody, that teaches them that when somebody does something wrong, you hit them. Well, well I, what do you say to retaliatory kid, force? Then kid, is it only if, passive? No, if a kid passive? is truly look, if a kid is truly sorry for what they do, and I know you can tell the difference when a kid actually is sorry for what they do and when they're not. If a kid is truly sorry for what they do. Again, not only if you teach, if you hit them, you're teaching them that you know you it's okay to hit. That's that's not all. But if a kid is actually sorry for what they did and you spank them anyway, which I've had it happen, I've seen it happen. Well, you know they did this wrong, so they need a spanking. Well, if they already know it's wrong and they're really really sorry for what they did, what is spanking going to do in that case? What is it going to help? It's not going to help anything. Reinforce the fear culture. All it does is reinforce fear. Do what I say. Well, well my question. Country. Do what you're told, or you're going to be put in the prison. Do what you're told, or you're going to get shot. That's all it does. No, no. My one question is: at that point, is it just pure pacifism? And do you believe there's ever a case in which retaliatory force is, is is legitimate? When raising a child, absolutely not. Hmm. I mean, I, I mean, I get accept, and, and that's the great thing about living in a free society. I think everyone should be able to raise their children whatever way they want, because everybody has a different idea about the best way to raise children. Um, I've just John's come down to the point phrase. where – what's that? That's your catchphrase in a free society, living in a free society with John Moreland. <laughs> yes. I'm going to start that. It's going to be a new show, Living in a Free Society with John Moreland. Yeah, hey, and I'm going to take all the credit for the name, and if you get paid, I'm getting royalties. That's all I have to say for that. I will give you I'll, – I'll, you'll be on the show. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's I gotta have my better. sidekick. Okay. I mean, would, okay. what is Batman gonna be without Robin? This is long um, as the she's roll my way. I'm Batman <laughs> and you're Robin. That's all I have to say. Wait a minute. I said you could be my sidekick. I'm Batman. You're Robin. I'm just the way it works. Sidekick. I'm nobody. Sidekick. <laughs> Equal billing. Equal billing, friends. Hey, hey, you can be Catwoman or Batgirl. There you go. You can be Batgirl. Then it's oh, like why a, it's gotta be gender based. Why has it got to be gender based? Why we got to deal with okay. genders? Because guess what? I'll That's the be, way I like it. In a free society, I'm, I'm gonna have it gender based. I'm gonna be bat person. So just knock it off, John Moreland. I'm bat. Person. I'm gonna be bat man. Okay, man, M A N. You should be bat boy. In fact, I know bat a number boy. of baseball teams that would take you on. What does he work for the Yankees now? I w- actually, yeah. I've I've become a fan of the Yankees. I, I have to say. Um, hey, anyway. It's not my fault. And, Nina loves yeah. the Yankees, and so I have to love the Yankees. No, you don't. In a free society, you don't have to. I'm choosing to love the Yankees, okay? <laughs> well, I will say this. Because it we makes will it continue. easier. <laughs> He's just trying to stay in the good graces of Nina. Anyway. Hey, um, if you've ever I seen Nina, you'd want to stay in her good graces, too. Seen Nina. I've seen pictures of Nina. So the, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go to a commercial break, and we'll continue our hijinks and antics right after a few messages. Get ready for the epic new documentary adventure ride of your life. Shade the motion picture. Hub you into the globalist domain and embellish and burn this film. Nothing in this world works the way you think it does. Nothing. Governments do not operate the way you think they do. Banks do not do what you think they do. 
The police department is not here for what you think it is. Nothing in your world works the way you think it does. We have never let them know that their world government has been identified and they thought they just clawed the world economy to bring in a worldwide police state. But if they did it, it's going to bring them down. You have to stand up. Speak up. Speak out. Shade the motion picture. Order your copy of the DVD today at ShadeTheMotionPicture.com. There are a lot of problems with Common Core. I don't even have time to go into most of them. But a step in the right direction would be to give local communities, teachers, parents control over their schools so they can design curriculums and standards to best meet the needs of their students and get the federal government out of education. Thank you for tuning in to Freedomizer Radio, where we have a 24-7 chat room where you can come and share what's going on in the world with people of like mind. Anything and everything against the New World Order. Dial 347-324-3704 to catch our live show. Beginning at 9 in the morning, Pacific Standard Time, Monday through Friday till midnight, and 9 to 9 on Saturday and Sunday. Take us to the beach. Take us to the park. Take us on a walk with the dog. Only on Freedomizer Radio. I'm not a lab rat. I'm not a lab rat. My family is not a bunch of lab rats. I am not a lab rat. Thanks, Spinifex. 80% of the processed food in America has been genetically modified. That's GMOs. That's GMOs. You can't even tell what foods contain GMOs at the grocery store. Because no GMO food labels are required. That makes us the guinea pigs. Hmm, sounds like an experiment to me. GMOs are scary. It's up to you. You're an adult. You can vote. I can't vote because I'm a kid. Vote yes. Vote yes. Please vote yes. Can't I cook you? Freedomizer, you have a voice. How will you vote? when initiatives are added to the ballot in your state. And we are back. Thank you for staying tuned during that little mini commercial break. Got so, we're, in our, <laughs> we're, we're in our last half hour of the show. I do want to remind everybody you can call in at 347-324-3704. You can also go to freedomizerradio.com and join us in the chat room and maybe earn or win some Bitcoins in the process. And right now I have on the phone with me my weekly co-host, John Moreland, who was slacking off the last two weeks. And in his place, I had Ken, the Liberty Phoenix, who is now joining us tonight as well. So both of you, welcome back to the last segment. Yo. John is vacuuming the floor again. Yes, I am. John likes an immaculate carpet. I do. I'm actually searching for a video, but I can't find it. It's an old Dennis Leary video. Have you ever seen uh, the uh, No Cure for Cancer uh, video he did, Stand Up? No, but I do want to talk about how the 2016 ballot probably will include breaking California into six separate states. Ooh, you know I love secession talk. You're going to get me turned on over here. I have – the voice alone should do that to you. Haven't you realized that <laughs> by now? Hey, talk secession to me, baby. Ooh, baby. All right. So <laughs> apparently a plan backed by venture capitalist Tim Draper to split California into six states has gained enough signatures to make the November 2016 ballot – Say backers of the six California's plan. So if there if this state does break into six different states, it's gonna be the northern part of California is gonna be called Jefferson. The midpoint is gonna be called North California. Then over to the left you're gonna have Silicon Valley. Underneath Silicon Valley is West California. So South California will be uh, at the bottom, of course, and then adjacent to Silicon Valley in West California will be Central California. I really think they need to come up with more creative names than North, Central, West, and South California. So hey, what happened what to that New Jefferson project? 
So what they're doing is basically bordering off all the poor people from the rich people? You know what? I will go to the post. To me. I'll post this proposed map inside the chat room so everybody can click on the link and they can see it for themselves. But it's amazing to me that Silicon Valley is going to get its own state. I can't wait till the whole place just falls off into the ocean. Well, that's what they have been. That's what they've been uh, warning about for years. That eventually an earthquake is going to come and just knock it off into the ocean. Now, can this be done without the Fed, or what are they going to say about this? Is this going to be on their? Uh, this is going to be a uh, what's called the ballot measure, right? Where all the all the citizens actually get to vote on it. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be. Yeah, so I guess technically it's not secession, but it's uh, it's getting close though. Oh, so are, are you only half turned on now? Yeah, not, I'm losing it. They're not seceding from the, the empire. That makes me sad. Well, you know, we talked about this before. There were a number of petitions going around uh, sometime last year talking about how all these states wanted to become their own countries. And everybody's like, well, good luck with that. They won't have a standing army. They won't have all this. They won't have all that. Um, and, you know, they might not. But then you might bring back the idea of the militia and voluntary military and voluntary this and voluntary that. My only concern with seceding from the United States is that these new countries would probably directly be attacked by the United States. Well, you don't really – I mean, you don't need a standing army to be to be secure in your borders, the, the, these imaginary lines that people seem to need to feel secure. Um, there's been lots of countries uh, around the entire world that have no standing army that exist just fine. I mean, in, uh, in World War II, uh, Germany pretty much just left the uh, – the, the country of Liechtenstein alone, because uh, they haven't had a standing army since 1868. And Germany is right next to it. I mean, they they had a border with arguably the most aggressive state in in history, and nothing happened to them whatsoever. You don't need a standing army to to to, to secure your borders. You just need to be small enough for them to ignore you. Well, I mean, uh, I didn't mean yeah, I, I mean, I'm against standing directly armies that in general, they would but... need an army. No, I didn't mean directly that they would need a standing army. That's just the example that I chose. But I do think that once they became their own countries, first of all, the president never even acknowledged any of those, um, any of the petitions, which he's supposed to do after a certain number of signatures, and he never did. But why do we expect him to do what's right or what he's supposed to do? So never mind that. Of course not. That was all just lip service. They're politicians. All they do is lie to us. They're not going to care. You could get 300,000 signatures that says, hey, just look at this piece of paper and find it. He's not going to care. He's not going to do that. What did he need to do that for? He's a second-term president. He can say, screw you all, and I'll do what I want. I'll sign all my signing statements, and I'll make all these presidential decrees, and what are you going to do? Impeach me. Let's see it. Yeah, it, that's just not going to happen. He has no experience with an intern. And that is. And then I'll drone doing. you. Right, and then and then we'll be droned. Yes. Exactly. So, I mean, I don't know why people put so much faith and trust in. Oh, he's going to do this. No, they got the signatures, and then he upped the signatures to one hundred thousand instead of twenty five thousand. So either way, I mean, he didn't look at anything. But seriously, if they got the opportunity to secede from the United States, I truly think he would take that opportunity to attack those new countries. Are you talking about, about new com- Californias? I'm talking about any any state that successfully seceded from the United States. He would attack them. Yeah, and more, than likely, the six- more than likely. He, he is the new, uh, the new Lincoln, isn't he? He's the new dictator, yeah, certainly a dictator. But, you know, he's busting in all these illegals. And I read earlier this week about the Cloward Piven. You guys, John, you know about Cloward Piven? About who? Cloward about the Cloud, Yeah, do you know about that? No, I'm lost. Uh, it's, a, it's a theory. So apparently the Cloward Piven theory goes this way, 
the, everybody's trying to figure out what his plan is bringing in all these illegal immigrants into the United States. And apparently, you know, nobody can figure out quite exactly what's going on. And there was a theory proposed by these people named Cloward and Piven a long time ago that says that if you saturate the economy with enough people who need to mooch off the system, eventually it's going to crash the entire system and it's going to bring about um, a wave of socialism and communism. And so people are now saying that he's trying to bring in all these illegal children to crash the system so that he can pave the way for a communist society. They don't even need to do that anymore. They just need to stop printing money. It's that simple. I mean, all these other they've got so many plan A I mean, through Z to where they don't need to they don't need to worry about all that other stuff. All they have to do is just stop printing and they can crash at any time they want. I think that's all just distractions. But well, uh, yeah, I think these people are obsessed with the government purposely crashing the economy. Are missing out. It's like people who think that the United States of America they celebrate on Independence Day still exists. The country fundamentally now is a market socialist, crony capitalist country. It's that's what it is. Why do they need to? They don't need to go any further. The beauty of the system too is people still are under the illusion that we have a capitalist system. So when anything goes wrong, they just say, "Oh, see, we told you guys it's capitalism." I mean, why get rid of that? I mean, they are in the perfect position right now. I think they've got exactly what they want already. We have socialized retirement, socialized medicine, um, uh, uh, poor people's health care, uh, socialized schools. I mean, what else do we need? We, I mean, everything is socialized. The government dictates anything and everything they want through regulatory agencies. I mean, and, they, and then they tax the crap out of you. So well, I, I don't, I don't understand it. these people's obsession. Well, speaking of the system, I did come across this list of the seven most ridiculous things that you can buy with food stamps. And I found this list to be somewhat humorous. Now, last night on the Proof Negative show, we actually had a representative who works for um, Nevada State processing applications for Medicare, food stamps, uh, cash assistance, et cetera. And what she said last night was that you cannot take a food stamps card and you cannot go into a place of business that's not selling food and purchase items from that. She said what must be happening is that when you get an EBT card, the debit card, it, it functions just like a debit card. When people get food stamps and cash assistance both, it's loaded, all of it's loaded onto this card. So people are taking their cash assistance and they're going to buy things with this card that are, that they can buy. They can't buy them with food stamps, obviously, but they can purchase them with the cash assistance. So these are the seven things or seven of the things that you can buy that they said with food stamps, but that was misleading. So here you go. Number one, bail. Convicted felons have reportedly used their EBT as bail money. So someone instructed another person to go to an ATM to withdraw money from his EBT for bail. And because it's difficult to trace ATM abuse, many speculate this problem is more widespread and not just found in isolated incidents. Well, you have to, you have to um, specify whether you're talking about cash assistance or food stamps because you can get both. Right. And the thing is, is that when I, I brought this article to her attention, she said that's impossible. It's not food stamps. So the article was misleading because she said both both money both money go on to the card. So you will get cash assistance and food stamps on the same card. But these people are buying these things with cash assistance most likely. Some of the stuff on this is is food stamps. So the bail is probably coming from the cash assistance, but people have actually pulled out cash assistance to pay somebody's bail, which is kind of ironic if you think about it. The government gives you this. The government steals the money. They give it to people, and then people are using it to get people out of the government. Well, the money that they steal from us is not being given back to us. The money that they steal from us is going into the coffers of the Federal Reserve and, ergo, Rothschilds. And so then the money that they give to us is just funny money that they print off looking like Monopoly money now. Now it's not it's even always Monopoly those money damn anymore, but it's all digital now. Yeah, you know, That's one family reunion I'd love to go to. That's one family reunion I'd love to attend. I thought I all right, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I thought no one knows who the 
the the who has the private stock in the Federal Reserve officially. Well, I'm speculating, but you know, I'm sorry, but they own everything oh, anyways. Why why wouldn't right. they own the Federal Reserve? They're evil, horrible people. Anyway, number two is lingerie. People are using cash except they accept EBT cards. So there's a store in Gonzales, Louisiana called Kiss My Lingerie. And other adult stores have also been known to accept welfare transactions. They said they don't violate the rules for EBT because of discrepancies in the law. Oh, loopholes, hmm. of course. Which leads us straight into number three, which is strip clubs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they were regularly making EBT withdrawals at the ATMs near and inside infamous porn shops, liquor stores, lounges, and hookah parlors. Technically, it also doesn't break the law because of the cash assistance program. So they're coming straight out and saying cash assistance in that one. But number four is so now, can you Can you take your EBT and transfer that to Bitcoin and then pay the strippers with that? I don't know. You, I, you know what? I will let you do the research on that. I, I totally promote. <laughs> I totally feel it looking hey. things up for yourself. Man, maybe me. maybe some of these strippers are going to get tired of inflation, and you're going to start seeing signs for the strip joint and underneath, we accept Bitcoins only. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you too. Anyway, number four is lobster. It says there have been multiple cases of this. As long as it's not tobacco or alcohol, you're golden. So they can purchase lobster with their food stamps. And I'm, I've heard of that plenty of times. So, you know, they buy well, some why not? It's they buy filet mignon, lobster, et cetera, et cetera. Number five is Starbucks. It says, while corporate stores don't accept EBT, any Starbucks in a Target or grocery chain is considered a grocery item. So $7 for a mocha cookie crumble frappuccino and pumpkin loaf, go for it. They charge $7 for that crap? If you buy all that, yeah. I used to work at Starbucks. I can tell you it's pricey. Oh yeah, this morning I went up, I went in the Starbucks and I got a venti americano room for cream and a their new ham and swiss uh I don't know, egg sandwich thing, croissant thing. And they rang it up and it was 8 bucks. And I was like, 8 bucks. It's good, yeah, but it's not that good. Wow. The primary thing that good. cost you the, the primary thing that cost you in that transaction was that sandwich. Because the Americano is not that expensive. No, it's like three, three, three fifty. And the problem is that their sandwich is like four and a half dollars. I was like, mm, it's not worth that much. Well, I'll tell you this much: you already are spending too much. An Americano is simply shots of espresso with hot water. That's typically. I know what it is. <laughs> so the fact that you're purchasing that and it's charging you three fifty—that's ridiculous. Uh, well, coffee is nothing but water run through crushed coffee beans. So, I mean, if we're going to get real technical about things, I mean, should you really spend $2 for some hot water running through some crushed coffee beans? <laughs> but we no, do. I'm to tell you, all of that is way too expensive. All of it. And then Except you can buy it. All, right. all right. Well, I don't want to buy an espresso machine, and the taste, the flavor of the Americano is far superior to a regular cup of coffee because it's much stronger. And so uh, I buy prefer an, it. So buy an espresso mach- machine with with cash assistance. I think that would so totally solve the whole problem. <laughs> I'll just give my cash assistance. Yeah, I'll I buy an espresso dull, machine, man. and I'll take that to Pork Fest and sell it on an agorist pitch. Thank you, government. Yeah. <laughs> oh, are you an agorist too? Absolutely. I was selling cigarettes at yes. Pork Fest. It was great. Yeah, he yeah. is. Yeah. Okay, now, number six. I, I, I don't meet very many libertarians or anarchists that are so agorist or, like, know anything about agorism. I actually just found out about it a couple of years ago. I started looking in the – uh, what's his name? Sam Conkin? Mm-hmm. Okay. We're, we will we will continue that portion. I must finish number six and number seven, and then you okay. guys can have We're about that. to geek out right there. Yeah, you are. That's <laughs> why I was like, okay. And then you guys can even take up the last ten Let minutes. Let me bring him back. Cut. I don't care. Number six is cold, hard cash. Some people are in the business of selling their EBT benefits for cash. Craigslist has been a great conduit for these creative entrepreneurs. And number seven is cupcakes or gourmet cakes. It's considered food no matter the price. So hello, non-essential $45 cake. You know, I have bought EBT with cash. I have done that. 
And it's amazing because you get 20 bucks worth of groceries for 10 bucks, And they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go buy some weed with this now. And I've also bought weed with EBT cards. It's amazing. I'm really not going to do it. Not, <laughs> thank you to say any of that. This says coming soon. Pot, Colorado is hey, hey, this is hey, what's going to happen. Listen. It's going to be this. No, speaking Sir, of pot. We, we heard your internet of, radio talk show program. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he goes by Liberty Phoenix. That's why he goes by Liberty Sir? Phoenix. Anyway, um, pot. Yeah, so they're going to track you down. Colorado, Colorado He's going to be the victim the of a case. no-knock raid. Oh, that's okay. Never anyway, <laughs> listen to this. Listen. <laughs> Speaking of pot, Colorado became the first state to legalize the use of recreational marijuana, and they also might become the first state to have taxpayer-funded pot smoking. A Colorado pot shop called Right Greens has already taken the steps to officially accept EBD. Okay, so there you go. There you go. Coming full circle, all the way back to marijuana. Sweet, sweet marijuana. It is okay. Now, I'm going to give you guys like eight minutes of the ten that are left to talk about um, your agorism. But first, I want to say this, that in the next ten minutes at nine o'clock Eastern, which is six o'clock Pacific, um, the Proof Negative show will be on next. I hope you guys will stick around to listen to that. I don't know who his guests are tonight, but I know that Cecile, Cecilia excuse me, is his guest host tonight so people stick around and listen to that and uh, now we're going to turn it over to John and Liberty Phoenix and let them talk about agorism go well where are you going <laughs> I'm sitting right here I'm going to mediate while you two talk about agorism oh okay well uh, I mean that was the uh, only uh, thing I wanted I don't know if there's much to talk about I mean might as well say hey let's get together and swap stuff I mean it's I mean yeah, that's essentially it. I mean, agorism is nothing more than selling a product or a service with zero regard for government regulations and licensure and, uh, you know, to say, hey, screw you up. You don't own me. I can sell whatever I want. Um, and guess what? Peace. Hopefully you can keep your head up below the radar enough to where you don't go to prison for a long time because, you know, selling cigarettes at Pork Fest probably would get me put in prison and I'd be selling cigarettes in prison. Why would I Well, well don't worry. I know an good. ATF agent that has drank the Kool-Aid and they will sit there and tell you, well, you know, these terrorists profit from the sale, the illegal sale of cigarettes. I'm like, well, what's illegal about them? Because, I mean, cigarettes are legal, right? No, no. They buy them in one state. This is how terrible people are. They buy them in one state with lower tax and then they resell them in another state where there's a higher tax. Ooh, and that funds terrorism. I'm like, really, guys? Come on. That's just free markets right there. I mean, come on. I mean, if if, if the government <laughs> wasn't sitting there shoving these cigarette taxes down people's throats and into their lungs, then they wouldn't have to drive to Indiana to get my pack of uh, camel <laughs> blues or whatnot, you know? I mean, come on. It's the hey, government's I just, I, fault. Somebody was that, smart. The they were like, hey. You know, I can resell this in another state and make a few bucks on the transaction. I don't see the problem. You bet your butt. You know, and I'm going to be getting <laughs> myself a nice massage table, and I'm going to be giving out mas- agorist massages at Porkfest next year. Forty bucks an hour. It's it's super cheap. You know, I, I'm sorry, four four millibitcoins an hour, and uh, I'm only going to be taking Bitcoin and Dogecoin, maybe Litecoin, maybe Obama coin. We'll see. And, but yeah, oh, yeah, there's Obama not really an Obama coin. coin, is there? Yes, there is. What the hell is serious? an Obama coin? Oh, yeah, I'm serious. There's an Obama coin. I'm going to have to look at That's that a up real right cryptocurrency. Now. That's a real cryptocurrency. Holy crap. There's millions. There's, there's probably upwards of 300 different cryptocurrencies. So, But the one that I'm mainly looking at is NextCoin because that takes – the best parts of Bitcoin and improves upon it. I don't know. I don't know exactly how. I'm not a cryptocurrency guru by any means, um, but from what I hear, it's going to be the you know the the Bitcoin killer. The way that Bitcoin is killing FRNs, Nextcoin is going to kill Bitcoin, which is completely huh. okay with me because there's way too many things wrong with Bitcoin. Um, for that to to, to last the oh. 100,000 years we need it to last. 
now now we can get on to a, a, a good debate here. All right, now I'll, I'll I, ask I, you this I, first. I just before looked I, up Obama coins. I just looked up Obama coins, and nothing is really popping up except for Obama inauguration coins. It's super secret. You got to get on the dark I guess net. It, is. it says Obama. <laughs> Obama is totally underground. This one says, not retro oh, wait a minute. Here's an article from eBay that says Obama coins make a lousy investment. <laughs> <laughs> what okay, Liberty Phoenix. Let, let me ask you this. I'm sure you've seen this raging debate among libertarians, gold versus Bitcoin. What say you? Um, gold, it's actually tangible. Um, because Bitcoin will die eventually. Um, gold's going to be here past Bitcoin. No, God, why can't any libertarian or anarchist give the right answer? The answer is both. If you're in a voluntary society and you like Bitcoin and I like gold, well then you trade Bitcoin. I'll trade trading gold. Who cares? Let the market decide. I'll accept and if Bitcoin, Bitcoin collapses, I'll accept your Bitcoin. See, there we go. That's what I'm talking ounce, about. I would take your ounce of gold for Bitcoin. Absolutely. All right, John, See, you have 30 that's, seconds. That's what we need. Response. My response? John, you have 30 seconds. Your response. <laughs> All right, well, I mean, I, I, made, I basically made my whole case. It's a voluntary but, you know, transaction. Okay. It's not going to make any All difference right, because Dogecoin blew up at, at Porkfest. Dogecoin has taken off. Dogecoin is going to take the world by storm. It actually has value. But see, and I think that's great, but you know, like Stefan Molyneux and Peter Schiff did this big debate on gold versus Bitcoin, and Peter Schiff was pro-gold, of course, and, and Stefan Molyneux was was uh, was pro-Bitcoin, and I'm thinking the whole time I'm listening to these guys, I'm like, are you volunteers or not? I mean, now, Schiff technically isn't, but still, I was waiting for one of them to say, well, that's where we should have a free market money, so if you want Bitcoin or you want gold or you want – what's the new one you're talking about that's taking off? Oh, Absolutely. You know, that, uh, no, all we the, need is uh, well, your what's friendly the, little what's the new coin? exchange. He said Dogecoin. It's Next got coin. dogs on it. Oh, Doge, Dogecoin. Dogecoin. Dogecoin yeah. Okay, great. Doge. Dogecoins. I don't care. Mickey Mouse coins. I don't care. Those exist too. <laughs> you know? As, as, what'd you say? <laughs> I'm almost positive, yeah. Mickey Mouse coins. Mickey coins exist. Well, I Mickey will tell co- you yeah. this. Pat? Back in the 1950s, the U.S. had over 30,000 types of currency. We're talking like, you know, even the drugstore vouchers that people would go specifically, they had their own type of currency. When they enforced the um, the gold standard, it all went out the window. When they started doing Federal Reserve notes, it all went out the window. All those types of currency went away. So now we're starting to see um, the influx of all these digital and um, cryptocurrencies. So... Well, that's what happens it's, it's when you something... institute legal tender laws. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, to me, it's yeah. no different than bartering. I mean, no one's going to sit there and say, I can't trade, you know, a knife for a pair of shoes. Nobody's going to say that. Why can't I trade anything for anything? I mean, my, to me, the legal tender laws don't make any sense on any level. No, of course I not. All they do is, say... is to prop up their own funny money. I will tell you guys this. We have a minute and a half left, so we're going to go ahead and we are going to pull up the music and get ready to end the show for the week. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the show. If you want to again, please check us out tomorrow on the Voluntary Virtues Network from 4 to 6 Eastern. Thank you so much, Liberty Phoenix, for being with us, and thank you, John, for finally coming back. See you next week. Yes, I hope that you guys and we're going to end the show with our friend Harrison Ray. So you guys enjoy. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Dogecoin. <laughs> <laughs>